What's going on YouTube? I'm Brandon. You are back in the Gill Strap Garage and today is my redemption shot at a better M8 cam video because the last one that I did that came out was just terrible. Uh, lost all my camera footage, didn't have a good GoPro angle. Lucky for me I just broke my tripod and I don't get my new one till Santa Claus shows up on uh, Christmas. We're about 10 or 15 days away from that. I don't even know. But uh, yeah, sadly, I gotta pull this FXR back off of the lift, which is gonna kill me a little bit because I really, really want this bike done. But with all the projects and everything I have, I have so much money out in some of these things that I need to kind of recuperate some of that so I can put it where I need it. Uh, yeah, so you're, what you're gonna see if you watch my other videos, uh, installing the Bassani exhaust on a bagger, he came back after I did a cam for his buddy and said he wanted the cam. So that's what we're doing today. I'm getting that bike on the lift, doing a cam. I've got a stereo for it I'm going to do. Um, I've got a new inner fairing for it. I need to size him for a clutch cable because his clutch cable is about to snap. He's got that thing pulled so tight for the bars that he's got. I'll show you guys what's going on with all that. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna pull. I'm gonna pull this old FXR off the lift. Hopefully, only one more time. I don't know. I, I, I like I said, I really want this thing done. But uh, I'm gonna get that 21 street glide up, and we're gonna tear that cam chest apart and get that new cam in there. So I, I don't know how I'm gonna film that yet because, like I said, my tripod just broke. But I'll figure something out. It'll come out good. Way better than the last one, that's for sure. Alright, I've got the exhaust torn down. Uh, I did not show how to do that because you can literally watch the video. I don't know what side that little tab pops up on. Uh, of me changing the exhaust on this bike. This was the bike that I did it on. Uh, all I gotta do on the left side of the bike is pull the spark plugs so when we're ready to turn the engine over we can do that through the back wheel. So, oh, this seems kind of loose. Should be tight. Should be a little tighter than that. That's all right. Now these M eights do have two spark plugs per cylinder, but we just need a kind of compression release so we can turn the engine over. That's all we're doing. We're going to put it in 6th gear. You can see I've got the exhaust taken off on this side. Right now I'm going to pop off these push rod covers to expose the push rods and I'm going to remove the cam chest cover. Now all you got to do usually to pop that cover off is get a soft hammer and tap the side. Now I'm going to I'm going to remove the push rod covers. Our kit comes with new covers. And all I'm doing is I'm taking the screwdriver and putting it in that tab and just walking it out and they pop right off. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn the back wheel over until one of these push rods, well until one of the cylinders is on overlap where that means both push, push rods will be moving 
simultaneously. That'll mean that the other side is on the base circle of the cam to where there is no tension on anything on that part of the valve train. So when I cut them, nothing's going to pop, nothing's going to get damaged. Let's see if I can do it without blocking the camera view. I doubt the camera will pick it up, but the rear is on overlap right now. So they're both going up and down at the same time, which means we can cut the front. All right, this is the point of no return right here. We're cutting some push rods. I'm gonna make sure you can see me. Oh yeah, you can see. I need to roll the other side over. That's it right there. Pull out the old O-rings. We are going to be changing lifters and tappet cuffs, so I got to pull these out. Oh man, my my ball and wrench is broke right now. I need to go warranty that thing and get a new one. I'm not even going to have time to finish this. In. Oh dang, I do have time. All right, it's gonna it's just going to be a struggle to pull that out. I'm going to turn the camera off so I can listen to some music while I just pull these pull these blocks off. All you got to do pull these four bolts. I'll show you what your or four bolts on each, eight bolts total. I'll show you what we're looking at after I get them out because there's some stuff to do in there. It's just going to be a slow going process because the tool that I use is broke right now. So I got to come up with something else, do it the hard way, be back with you in a minute. So check it out. I got those covers off and you can see the tappet cuffs here. These are plastic pieces of crap. Don't leave those in your bike. When I open up that SNS kit that's down there, you'll be able to see the uh, the nice aluminum, sturdy, solid, reliable tappet cuffs that it comes with. So I'm just gonna pull these off. I'm hoping I can do all this without having to pull the air cleaner. I've already gone this far. I think I think it's possible. Oh, where the lifter's gonna come right with it? Come on. Come on. Oh, no, didn't do it. Okay, I'm gonna save that bolt. We're gonna need the bolt. We won't need that cuff though. That's where those go. I do that to be funny, but that's just one more piece for me to pick up later. There's a beveled edge in there. It made it look like the lifter was sitting in there super funny. Uh, these lifters are going to be trash. We're not reusing those. So I'm just going to check them all out. And with how low mileage there is on this bike, it's pretty likely I'm not going to see any wear on anything. But if something's going funny in there, you want to catch it. Yeah, I'm going to pop these sprockets off now. I found that is the easiest way to do that. Not putting them back together, of course, but. T. I don't remember what size Torx that is. 27. We're gonna pop this chain tensioner off now. So I'm just gonna pull these off. Set these off to the side. If you're gonna pull the chain apart, take a paint marker or something and mark the front of the chain so when you put it back on, everything's spinning in the same direction that it was before. 
Right now I'm going to be taking all of these outer bolts out so the cam plate and the oil pump will come out. These four bolts right here hold the oil pump in place. Somebody's been in here before. For what? That bolt is totally rounded out. Either that was installed like crap at the factory or somebody's been in here before. I, I want to see what's going on. I think he bought this bike brand new. I'm right out now. So, there's a oil pump and cam plate assembly. I'm going to set this in the pan and let it drain. The cam should just slide right out. We're going to pull out this seal. And before we go any further with anything else, I'm going to set up my tools and I'm going to pull and press the new cam bearing. So this is going to be the tool we use to remove and install the cam bearing. If you look close, it's got an install side and you flip it for a remove side. So we're going to start of course with remove, set it up and slide all of our pieces through and get that bearing pulled out. So I put a little lube on the threads of this, a little oil I should say. Sometimes these need a little assistance. You don't want to force it too crazy because if you if you try to shove that thing in there like sideways and force it through, you can break the back side of that bearing off and shove it into your case and then you're splitting cases to clean it. You don't want to do that, right? Take this rod, slide that through and that'll expand the tip. These little holes are stamped with R's and I's so you know if you're lining it up right. Take our big washer, slide that on. Take our nut, slide that on. And pop this thing out. Make sure the camera can see me. There's the bearing on the tip of the tool. Before I soak the new bearing in assembly lube, take a look at that. And this is the new bearing here. This is the old one. Way better design here. I don't even know how Harley gets away with putting these in their motorcycles to begin with. But change your cam bearings if you're doing a cam. Change them. I'm going to get this prepped right now and then we're going to press it back into the bike. So this is how it goes here. This rod threads into the plate. This piece threads onto that rod and your cam bearing sits on top of that. Spray a little oil on there. Let me back this up. Okay, now it's sitting close. I want to make sure that it's actually setting in the way it's supposed to as we run this home. Make sure it's not crooked or anything. So as this threads in, 
it gets close, you'll feel a little pressure. You don't want to go cranking down on it, that just means it you've got it seated about where it needs to be. If you bought a nice tool, the cup that you set the bearing into will be uh, it'll have like a stop on it, so it'll it'll recess to the perfect position. If you bought a cheap one that doesn't have that stop, then uh, you can push that thing way too far into the crank, or I mean into the case towards the crank. Back it out a little bit. All right, check the run out. We're about four thousandths, which is really good. So, we are okay to run that SNS plate and pump. I'm gonna pull that back off and then start prepping the pump on top of my toolbox. You know, I know I said I was gonna do it on the bench, but I'll put it in piece by piece on the bike and show you how it goes. So we've got two new low rings here. I'm gonna put some assembly lube on. The thicker one is gonna be for the oil pump on the bottom, and this one is gonna sit behind the cam plate. You want to press the pump into the o-ring in the case, not the other way around. Okay, so we've got our o-ring on the back here, on the back of this plate. If it does not clear, if we don't get the clearance that we need, I don't have a problem not running that o-ring back there. Uh, that o-ring was updated later on in the bikes to solve the something issues that some of the bigger cubic inch engines had. Uh, like I said, if it doesn't clear, I don't have a problem pulling that out and not running it all together. Uh, I'm going to put some assembly lube all in here uh, on on the back side of the pump, on the pickup of the pump. It's all over. I'm going to douse this whole thing. Very generous amounts. Slide the gears on and see if that helps me line it up a little better. Cover this in assembly lube. This first gear is directional. It's got a mark on it. Or it's got a notch in it. You want the notch towards the engine. Insane. <laughs> I don't even know if that got any of that. Okay, well, on the chance that I didn't pick that up with the camera, that thing finally was snapping in there. I set the gear in to kind of align it with the uh, pinion shaft a little bit better. And it sat kind of where it needed to be. I took the, hand the handle end of my dead blow, something kind of soft, just pushed on it and it popped in there. So now we're going to take these, we got little dowels that come with these. We'll slide the dowel in the top one. Got a lot of assembly lube in there, that might be an issue. That's better. The bottom one. I'm going to lather up this plate really well in assembly lube. Everything, everything gets assembly lube. Okay, next, I got the front gears pulled out. I'm gonna pull these and assembly lube all that. I'm gonna spin these gears so they line up with the pinion shaft. Okay, assembly lube all in here. I should have done this when it was off. I should have done the front. Okay. 
Now we check with the straight edge to make sure we're at least flush across here. If it's protruding, then we gotta ditch that seal in the back. We're straight flush. Looks good. Don't have to pull it back apart for that o-ring, which is nice. All right, I've got the plate and the cam here. I'm gonna lube everything up and we're gonna get ready to get this thing in and torqued. <laughs> These SNS kits come with two bottles of assembly lube and you should be using just about two bottles of assembly lube. Don't skimp on it. There's no sense in saving it for later. Don't be afraid to get messy. This comes with new oil pump bolts. I believe they're a little longer than the OEM ones. Here we've got Loctite on our new bolts. Our new oil pump bolts, I should say. Those are gonna be the ones labeled with a letter here. I'm not running these home crazy with this. I'm just getting them close. Give me a minute, I gotta look up the sequence on what to torque those to, cause I don't remember. Uh, and then I'll walk you guys through the sequence. All right, so here's the deal. We're gonna torque, oh not torque. We're gonna snug all of the plate bolts in order, but do not torque them, do not tighten them, just snug. Now we're gonna snug these and not torque them. Now we're gonna torque screws one through six between 90 and 120 foot pounds. <laughs> Did I just say foot pounds? Definitely not foot pounds. Inch pounds. Now we're gonna rotate two full revolutions with the pinion shaft facing up when we're done. Okay, so we'll just say that's starting from one are starting from zero. There's one. There's two. You know, I'm gonna give it another one for good measure. Just because. Now we're gonna torque the oil pump bolts between 100 and 100, or between 90 and 120 inch pounds. All right. Now the reason oh, the reason we rotate the crank around before we torque the oil pump bolts is you want you're kind of settling everything in. You're kind of settling in the oil pump and the gears where it wants to be, so nothing's binding up as it's turning because then you're just going to roach your brand new pump and plate. So let's keep rolling. I forgot to hit record. All I'm doing right now, I took the chain off and I marked it like I talked about earlier. Um, I've got both sprockets just snug on here. I want to check. Uh, I want to check end play. I guess that would be the different. I guess that's the term I'm looking for. Between the two, uh, make sure they're sitting pretty flush. So I just got a straight edge here. and it's a little far out. So I think I'm gonna have to get, I'm gonna have to go to Harley and get a different spacer. Probably buy a kit for it, not a big deal. I gotta go get some other things anyway. So I'm gonna pull that back off and I'll continue the rest of the build up. We'll move on to some lifters real quick. Okay, I got my lifters in. They're pumped up and in. If you want to see how to pump up lifters, 
then you can check out my video on chasing valve train noises. But uh, I'm about to put these new tappet cuffs on. It did come with new bolts. They are labeled front and rear. And these things are just overall so much better than, uh, than stock. Okay, you can see how they sit in there, just around the lifters. Nothing crazy. Gonna get some Loctite on our bolts and torque them down. All right. Now I'm gonna get my Tappet covers, I'm going to stick them back on there with their new gaskets and torque them down. Again, I'm not going to show you doing that because my tool's broke. It's taking me forever. It's like one turn at a, at a time with the wrench and uh, an Allen key that fits in there. So I will show you what we got when it's back together. All right, I got the uh, tappet covers on there. That's about all I'm going to be able to do for the day, not only because I'm running out of time, but I'm also out of parts. So I'm going to come back at this tomorrow, so long as I have the spacer, I can show you how to disassemble and reassemble the new push rods. you got to take the springs out of the old push rod covers and put them into the new push rod covers. Super simple. Uh, if i got that spacer, I can finish the build up on the cam, put the uh, tensioner on super easy stuff then we can start this thing up and hear it I can knock out the few other little things that I gotta do on this bike and we will get it out of here and get it home alright picking up where I left off yesterday I went to Harley I got some of the correct or I don't know if there's some of the correct but I bought a spacer kit so I can get the correct spacer in there I'm gonna pull the one out right now measure it up and see what that one is and pick out of the pack which one I need and just keep fitting it until I get it right Yeah, this one's a 110. I'm going to try the 130 based off of what it was yesterday. Or what it looked like yesterday. Nope, 140. is the ticket right there. Now that I got the right spacer in there, I'm gonna pull that back off and put the chain on. We're gonna get some red Loctite on those threads because you definitely don't want that coming out. And get it torqued up, put the cover on, put our push rods in, adjust them, and then I'll be able to put the exhaust back on and we can hear what it sounds like. Make sure you get your sprockets lined back up in the chain right. After it's in there, you know they're lined up, you can rotate them anyway. But just being one tooth off, you could be in for a really bad time. Now we're going to get our tensioner in, take our tensioner, just pull it apart. I'm going to fill all this up with uh, assembly lube, put some assembly lube on the top, lock tight my new bolts and torque them down in there. So now I'm just going to turn it over and make sure the chain doesn't bind or anything. All 
I still have to assemble, I still have to put the old springs from the old pushrod tubes into the new ones. So let's do that right now and get everything prepped. So I've got the old pushrod tubes here. I've got the whole new kit here. I'm going to get this opened up and show you what we got to take out of these. I'm going to show you how to do one of them and I'm going to do the rest off camera. Alright, I'm doing this one handed so it's going to be a little tricky. I'm going to slide this apart. See the old o-ring stayed in there? That's fine. We don't need that. All we need is this spring. So I took all the springs out like I showed you. We're going to pull that apart. Take that washer off. Put that lid back, put that cover back on. Take one of our springs. Take our washer. Take our new, oh, oh that's the bottom o-ring. Take our new o-ring. And then our cover. And it's going to sit just like that. Now you're going to have an o-ring that sits on the bottom in the tappet block and then a, o a thicker o-ring that sits on the top that goes into the head. Alright, this is the tricky part to film. So I'm going to start by putting my o-rings inside the uh, tappet blocks here, making sure the old ones are out. Okay, now I'm going to turn it over until I know one of these are on the base circle. So we know our fronts are good to go. Oh, this is going to be really, really hard to film. So I'm going to take my tube, my push rod. I have these quickies collapsed. I will only ever use quickie push rods now. These things are awesome. I'm going to kind of work the top. Oh, see? I still got O-ring sitting in here. And these quickies, you wanna, you're not going to be able to see what I'm doing here. But you're going to get it up there, slide the bottom down. You want to make sure you hold the nut because these tappet blocks are so long in the M8s that if you drop it, it'll, it'll be pretty hard to fish it out. Alright, I'm just going to do this one because if we can't see this one, we're not going to be able to see any of them. But uh, what I did, I took the push rod and I've adjusted all the up and down slack out of it to where there's a little, little tiny bit of tension on it. I'm going to take a paint. Well, in this case, it's some touch-up paint. Take some paint, set that on there. And according to these s, &S instructions, we're going to go out four full turns. So we're going to have to count those turns. bottom still and we're gonna tighten tighten those real good they're pretty stiff they can move a little bit but they're pretty stiff we're gonna let them bleed down at least 20 minutes it's cold so probably a little bit longer I'm gonna throw the other one in there Wait a little bit and adjust the rear and I'll show you where I'm at when it's done. Alright, I have the push rods adjusted. I threw the cover on, torqued it down. This part, I don't know if I'm going to be able to show you, but I'll explain the best that I can. So I've got the top part of the push rod tube pushed all the way up into the head. Got the bottom all the way down, expanded. Most of the time, you should just be able to get something with a little bit of leverage on it get under one of the fins and pry that pry that down. It's kind of a two-handed thing so I'm not going to be able to record and do it but just take your time with it. If you can get a hold of something softer maybe get something softer so you don't scratch that finish up if you're you know practicing and sliding that thing all around but like I said just a long flathead screwdriver 
You can pry that thing down enough and slip your new covers on. Alright, here we go. I got this thing all buttoned up. Spark plugs are back in. Exhaust is on. O2 sensors are plugged in. Push rod covers are on. Everything is torqued and tight. We're going to see if I did it right. No, I'm just kidding. I know I did it right. Uh, but we're going to fire it up and check it out. If we hear a tick on the initial startup, that could be normal. Depending on if, you know, oil's still working its way to the top. It shouldn't be very loud if that's the case, and it should go away really quick. Uh, but yeah, let's fire this thing up and see what she sounds like. How many miles are on this thing? Oh, that's... 6,500 miles. Let's fire her up. Not gonna try to wop on it too hard because it's uh, pretty cold out, but sounds great. That cam makes such a big difference in these motors. Always makes me happy to hear that thing fire up too for the first time after you do a little motor work. Uh, yeah, super stoked. I gotta do the fairing, do the inner fairing on this. I got a speaker system to put in it, and uh, she's gonna be in the trailer and off to the dyno. Hopefully, Tuesday, Wednesday, I don't know. My schedule's tight, but uh, yep, that's it. That's how to do the cam on your Milwaukee 8. Much better video, I'm hoping, than the last one that I did. The last one came out terrible. A uh, little redemption shot here, a little more clear and uh, clean picture. If you guys like that, thumbs up's appreciated. Share it, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. It really goes a long way. Thank you very much, and I will see you in the next video.